All right, so we're going to go back to a little bit of basics, and we are going to talk about building React components. Um, so we're going to focus on this one component. It's inside of the React Client Starter app. So how this thing actually gets put into a web page and everything else, we're not going to worry about today. Um, we're just going to assume that it gets rendered into a page, which it does right here. So right now we're just rendering this one image. Uh, the, if you want to pull down the project, you can do the same thing. You just have to pull up home.jsx, um, run the server using npm run hot, and then you can modify this component uh, however you'd like. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is what is React? So React is a really cool brand new framework um, gets a lot of attention in the kind of programming media circles right now. For developers, it makes our lives a lot easier because now we can think about how, well, we don't have to think about the how our data gets displayed. We just kind of show how it should be displayed and then we let React worry about it. So underneath the hood, React has a virtual DOM, which makes this process of rendering very, very fast and very efficient. Uh, there's a couple of things when coming to React that I see people kind of get nervous about or scoff about. So let's start with that. The first thing is this embedded HTML. For the last 20 years or so, we've talked about separation of concerns and your logic shouldn't be mixed with your display and so on and so forth. So as soon as people see this, they feel like we've thrown all of that thinking out the window and that all of a sudden this is heresy and we should probably burn these guys at the stake. In fact, um, having the display this close to the logic makes it much easier. So in many other applications, you have to look at your logic and then go hunt down the view and then you're constantly flipping back and forth between windows. This is actually very nice because the logic that controls this tiny bit of rendering will live right next to the piece that renders it. So I guess what I have to say is learn to live with it. <laughs> this is how we do it now. Um, so that is JSX. You can see that we've named the file JSX. Webpack is going to take this and transpile it into something else when it actually comes to, to building the file. Uh, and we'll take a look at what that looks like here in just one second. Um, you can enter anything you want in here, as long as it's valid HTML. It has to have an open tag and a close tag. So if I save that and I toggle over my browser, you can see there's the hello world inspect this and see what this code actually looks like. So if I go into my home JSX code, you can see that Webpack has transpiled this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that does not look like the code that we've written, but that's okay. You can kind of ignore most of the stuff up here. You can see here's this function home. So that's getting closer to the code that we've written. Oh, there's render. There's something I recognize. So that's the render function that we that we wrote. You can see there's the image declaration. Now this does not look like the JSX code that we wrote. It's not, it doesn't look like HTML anymore. Instead you'll notice we are doing this create element and we have this div. Um, here's another create element with an image. That's the actual um, code. That's what the JSX, all those HTML tags get turned into is functions. So <clears throat> You could, you could write this if you really, really wanted to, and if you really, really hated stuff that looks like this, you could write this. You could write create element div, create element image, create element h2, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, But this is really hard for a human being to read. This is pretty easy for a human being to read. So going back to, oh, you've mixed your display and your logic. Well, actually, it's all just logic now. There isn't really display. It looks like there's display because we've used tags here, but it's actually just functions all the way down. And that's kind of cool. The benefit of doing this is we create, this is what creates the virtual DOM. 
And now I have these objects sitting in memory that I can compare to previous versions and I can re-render it very, very quickly. So that's what makes React very fast. Um, okay, so does all of that make sense so far? When we write yeah. the React components, it's gonna look just like this. Now, you might be tempted someday, it, if you wanna do some multiple lines, you can put parentheses around it, like if you prefer that it look like this. Put parens this, put that semicolon, and that, that works too. Just depends on which style you prefer. <coughs> someday you might be tempted to do something like this because you need an h1 tag right here above the div, and you will say, I am the h1, and that will look valid to you. And then you'll save that, and you're going to toggle over to your code, and you see that you have this really ugly error right here. And you're going to get something module build failed, syntax error, adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in a closing tag, and you're going to say to yourself, I don't understand, what is wrong? Okay, going back to this code right here. Remember that what is actually being returned is not a string. It's not this HTML. What's being returned from the render method are a bunch of nested methods. And in fact, you can't return two things right here, right? JavaScript doesn't like that. Remember, it's it's at the end of the day, it's going to look something like React up, create element um, with some params. That's you know the H1 right here. So ignoring what we had in place for one second, could you ever do that? Is that valid JavaScript? And the answer is no. That's not valid JavaScript. I can't return to things. It's like uh, that doesn't make sense. I don't know what to. Okay, so that's why you have to have a top level tag to enclose everything because this guy is that top level function that gets returned by the render method. So if you wanted to have, add an h1, you'd have to add it inside here. Like that. There we go, like that. And so now, that should have worked. And you can see that I'm correct. Okay. So that's the basics of writing a React component. That gets you through the render method. The only thing that your React component needs is a render method. We choose to use this syntax because we like the new ES6 syntax with classes. So you can do class whatever extends React default component. Um, this is a really nice way to write. It's semi, you know, sort of future proof because this is the direction JavaScript is headed. Did you change class to bar? Um, you can. Um, so there is a different way to write uh, React components. So um, now that I've done this so long, I can't remember. Uh, let's switch back to. Component. Um, I think it's react.create component or yeah, something. Yeah, react.create class. Um, is it create class or create component? And their docs are really good, so it is create class. Okay, so yeah, you can do it this way too. Is there a benefit of being in the class versus the class? Um, not necessarily. Yes, six, you said. Yeah, so this is this this is basically the syntax that we've adopted. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I've done this for so long that I couldn't even remember the create class. I'm pretty sure that used to be create component, but um, yeah. in newer versions of React, it, you probably changed it to create class. Uh, I prefer this syntax 
because eventually that's what well I'm guessing this syntax will always work. Some people don't like classes in JavaScript. But with the new ECMAScript 6 or 2015 or whatever they're calling it these days, um, that just makes for really nice, easy to read code. I think this this looks better than this, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the other nice thing is notice that I have to write my functions this way, and down here I don't. So if I want to add a new function right here that's like, update something, something. then I have to write it like this and I'm have to put commas between them because this is just a plain old JavaScript object so you, you can see that with these brackets right here and right down out here. I'm basically providing a JavaScript object to the create class method of react and it's returning me this hello message class. Down here if I want to add a new method I can just say update something like this, Oops. and I just do it like that. I don't have to put commas in or anything. Um, it's just a little less typing. I think it looks a little cleaner, so that's why I prefer this okay. method. Uh, at the end of the day, <coughs> I'm pretty sure it ends up being the same code, and we can check that. Um, let's see, I should actually be able to check this. This. Uh, no, it's stripping out. Maybe it's stripping out. Let's and make sure we have the latest code. Just check real quick. Okay, so there's the hello message. You can see hello message, create class. It's got this display name, hello message. There's our two methods. Um, down here, this is the class version of it. Um, so it actually transpiles into something a little different. Uh, it has the create class there still, but it's this private method. Um, I think it's called in here somewhere. Uh, oh, I'm guessing these are probably done by Webpack or through, by Babel through the transpilation process. But you can see this inherits, so home is equal to this guy. Home inherits from React component. Um, this essentially is your constructor. And then here's your create class, which also receives this home as a parameter. And then it looks like we're passing in an array of objects. Um, and this first object contains all of the the methods inside of that class. How it does that is probably beyond the scope of what we want to talk about right now. Um, but you can see how it becomes slightly different things. So this gets transpiled into something simpler than the class version. That might be an argument by people who prefer this technique to say, do it this way because it's simpler after it's been transpiled. It even looks like a little bit less code but I don't think it's a huge win. And as we're actually writing the code, I think this looks nicer and is easier to write. Okay. All right, so we've talked about the render method, and let's stop there.